Well, after nearly a three-year wait, it's finally here. It's A2A Simulations Piper Comanche 250. For many, myself included, this was a favourite in both FSX and Prepared. And it features A2A's trademark AccuSim technology. In a nutshell, the behaviour of the aircraft, the flight dynamics, are controlled externally, providing for a more realistic and persistent aircraft. And from my quick first look, well, I may have found an aircraft to top the Blackbird Simulation's Cessna 310R. Now, this is not a full review of the aircraft. That, well, it'd be a two-hour video. But this aircraft is almost like a living and breathing thing. You've got to treat it right. And so for those anxious to get in the air, here's a quick start guide. I haven't dotted every I and crossed every T. There's a comprehensive checklist involved if you want to do this. But this one will get you up in the air and get that engine started with a minimum of fuss whilst maintaining a realistic workflow. A to A simulations. Welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is a sim hanger. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching and let's get started. Welcome to the very authentic cockpit. First order of business, let's bring up the tablet. We're cold and dark and there's a couple of things we need to do before we get away. There's an absolute ton of features and options via the tablet. But what we're most interested in is the controls tab. Let's get rid of those wheel chocks, the tie downs, the control lock we can take off separately and get rid of the pitot cover. That's now done. We have persistence on and that's by livery. And we're going to add some passengers as well. And I want them to be visible. That's done. Let's go across to the fuel and payload. I'm going to add two passengers. Got plenty of fuel for my first flight today, so we can carry on. Let's put the tablet away and let's get ready for departure. We'll start off by closing the door. This is a two-stage process. Pull the handle in to shut the door and then latch it locked. Door closed. I'd recommend that you open the small latch windows, but I'm not going to do that right now, as I want to demonstrate to you how realistic AccuSim is. Let's now get rid of the sophisticated controls lock. Yep, it's that bungee cord. I'll just hide the yoke so we can see the buttons and dials more clearly. First item on our checklist is the brakes. To set the parking brake, press down on the rudder brakes and pull out. Parking brake on. Check the landing gear switch is in the down position, which it is. Then check flaps are fully retracted. Lever all the way forward. Pulling back on the lever will drop the flaps. Flaps now fully retracted. The Comanche 250 has a number of circuit breakers. They're positioned under the light switch dash. And we want to check that they're all pushed in as they're all simulated in this aircraft. There they are. We can see them there. And they're all in, so that's good. And there are two others that we need to check. They're here, that's the autopilot and turn coordinator, and those circuit breakers are in as well. Time now to get the fuel on. The fuel valves are between the two seats. I'm going to select the left tank. One position up is the tip tanks, and all the way up is the main tanks. I've chosen the left main. My tip tanks don't have a lot of fuel in. Bit of heavy breathing going on in this cockpit. And you can see with all the windows closed, we're starting to fog up. But we can sort that by opening the two latch windows on the co-pilot and pilot side. That'll allow fresh air in and should clear the mist and fog. There's my two passengers for today's flight, looking suitably and appropriately nervous. We're not far from engine start now, so we'll push the mixture lever all the way in and do the same for the prop lever. And I'm just going to push the throttle in about a quarter inch. We need a little bit of throttle to start. Before start, check our carb heat is off, which it is. Time to bring this beauty to life, so master switch can now come on. And we'll also put our beacon light on now, so others in the vicinity can see the aircraft is manned. There we are, that's done. Then we'll move the yellow switch, the fuel pump to on. And I can hear the fuel pump clicking away. Everything in this aircraft has its own sounds. That's the primer. We click it to unlock. This is our first engine start of the day. It's not too cold though, so I think I'll give it four pumps. That should be enough to get us going. If it was cold, well, we may have done five or six. Got to be careful. You don't flood the engine though. 
Now let's get the mags to both. I'm using my Bravo for that. Mags to both. There we are. And now for the moment of truth. We're about to hit the starter button. And if you've done everything correctly, she should start. Press the button and hold it in for a short period of time. Let that prop turn. And we're away. Just adjusting my throttle to get it down to about 1000 RPM. If you pull the throttle all the way back, your revs are going to drop to 800 or below and the chance is you'll foul the plugs and the engine will stop. Just taking a quick look at the PNTs, fuel pressure is good, oil temperature is starting to rise. So it's time to get our avionics on, bring our instrumentation to life, turn my radios on. Today I've got it configured for the Garmin GNS 530. Multiple options are available with this aircraft including the GTN 750 etc. Wait a moment while the Garmin is booting. I've now turned the radios on and there they go. We have life. Also turned the transponder on. I'm going to switch it to alt as we'll be departing shortly. Done. Between your altimeter and your RPM, you have a digital readout indicating the status of the engine and various parameters. Press the black button and then the white and it will cycle through all the various options. Alternatively, multiple presses of the white button will cycle you through all the various options. This is a noisy bird. On the left hand side, you can choose to plug in your headphones and reduce the noise accordingly. You'll probably need this on long flights, but you can reduce it further by clicking here and that enables noise cancellation. No attention to detail is too small for A2A simulations. We're nearly ready to go now. Just set our barometer using this dial here. But I know that this airport is almost at sea level. There we are, that's set. And finally to align our heading with the wet compass. Showing about 185, 190 degrees. So we'll just align that. And we do that by right clicking and pressing this knob in. If we don't press it in we'll be changing the heading and now we can rotate to align. That's about right, that'll do. And once again, right click to pull the button out and it reverts back to its heading function. Our GNS 530 has finished its initial boot, so we can activate that. It'll now go and pick up the relevant satellites and we can turn the fuel pump off. Strobe light now to on. Okay, the GNS is now alive. Let's just bring back the yoke and we can just check that our controls are free and clear. We'll use the external view just to verify that. Ailerons left and right. That all seems to be working fine. Elevators up and down. All good. Parking brake off. And just give the throttle a nudge. Always a good idea to test your brakes at this point. We'll just stop here and do our run up. Then we'll get on the runway and we'll be away. Parking brakes on. Quick check on the pressures and temperatures. Everything should be normal or in the green. Our engine's been running for about six minutes now, so for takeoff, fullest tank. So we'll just switch over to the right hand tank. First of all, fuel pump on, right hand tank to main, and left hand tank to off. That's it, fullest tank now selected. We'll now push the mixture all the way in to full rich. Double check our props are fully forward. Now slowly move our throttle forward until our RPM reads 2000 RPM. Then we can carry out our final checks, something advisable to do on the Comanche 250. Failures are fully modelled. There we are, 2000 RPM. We'll leave the throttle there and we can check the magnetos. Switching first to left and then to right. That's left and we should see the RPM drop. Yep, dropped about 100, that's okay. Back to both and let the RPM build up. 
Now we'll select the right magneto on the ignition switch. Once again we've got something just a little bit over 100. That's okay, back to both. And now check the carb heat and once again we should see the RPM drop which we're doing. Carb heat is functioning. Now a quick check on the trim controls which are up above us there. I want them set just about neutral. That's good. Trims are set. Now we can cycle the prop. We'll do three cycles, pulling the prop all the way back, let the RPM drop, then push it all the way forward and let the RPMs build. The sounds on this aircraft are absolutely stunning. Some of the best I've experienced in sim. That's our run-up complete. Note that I should have turned the fuel pump off. Oh well, we live and learn. Now returning the throttle and our idle back to around 1000 RPM. Engine's quite a bit warmer now and we're ready to go. Parking brake off, nudge the throttle forward and let's taxi onto the runway. That's it, we're lined up. I finally remembered to turn the fuel pump off. Now a check of our PNTs. Everything looks more or less in the green. I leave the side windows open just for now till we're up and away. Doors are locked, fullest fuel tank selected. Passengers nervous, sick bags at the ready. I think we're good to go. Well, that brings us to the end of our quick start guide for the A2A simulations Comanche 250. I hope you find it useful for what promises to be an exceptional aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'll certainly be giving it some more airtime. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon. And bye for now.